namutla sa takot ang bakla na si Raul Manuel sa mga matitinding sagot ni Sir Orion Perez tungkol sa pagbabago ng konstitusyon. Takot na agad si Raul Manuel dahil gusto ni Sir Orion Perez na kakampi ni former President Rodrigo Duterte na si Bakin o Buwagina ang walang kwentang party list system sa gobyerno. Napahiya itong bakla na si Raul Manuel sa napakatalinong bata ni former President Duterte. Sayang lang ang budget na binibigay sa mga walang kwentang party list ayon yan sa dating national advisor na si Prof. Clarita Carlos. Pero bago tayo magpatuloy, kung hindi ka pa nakapag-subscribe sa akin channel, please do subscribe at pindutin lang ang notification bell para lagi kang updated sa aking video. Let me ask, uh, sino po sa ating mga resource persons yung uh, bahagi ng kanilang uh, minumukahi ay uh, pagbabago din sa term limits ng uh, mga opisyal ngayon na ating pamahalaan? Okay, so I think one from uh, Correct Movement. Briefly, may you know bakit uh, nagpapanukala na baguhin yung term limits para sa ating officials? Okay, if I may answer, um, kasi meron po talagang research na very solid um, na ang term limits po, Um, according to uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Pablo Kerubin of, uh, National, of uh, New York University, lumabas ang, sa kanyang research tungkol sa Pilipinas, and he's, he's a Latin American, he's actually Colombian. Uh, ang lumabas doon, eh, dahil sa ating term limits na ginawa, lumala po ang mga political dynasty. Ang nangyari po, dahil doon sa mga, kumbaga before, when we did not have, uh, when we did not have term limits for um, all lower positions other than president and vice president, There was there were already political families, but there were less. So normally, may isa dyan sa pamilya, isa lang tao ang magraran, and then pag nag-retire na siya dahil pagod na, do doon yung magkakaroon ng siguro yung kanyang anak or something. So it's going to be what you call a thin dynasty. No? So yung sunod-sunod, hindi yung sabay-sabay. Ang nangyari dito ngayon sa 1987 Constitution ayon sa research ni Dr. Pablo Kerubin, lumabas na nagkaroon tayo ng fat dynasties. Secondly, hindi lang sa, kung kumagay yung dating walang dynasty, nagkaroon ng thin dynasty, yung nag mga dating thin dynasty, naging fat dynasty. So, lumala. Secondly, may research naman yung isang kaibigan na Japanese uh, political scientist, si Dr. Uh, Yuko Kasiya, lumalabas na when we actually created the Mexican-style sexenio, which is um, yung single six-year term ng Pilipinas, ginaya natin sa Mexico po yan. Alam naman natin ang Mexico, hindi ganun ka. Hindi <laughs> tinutularan dapat eh. Drug, uh, drug country yun. But anyway, so, ginaya natin, nung ginaya natin, buong nagkaroon ng disintegration of political parties. Nagkaroon ng, nagkaroon ng yung, yung presidential bandwagon. This is book that she wrote called Presidential Bandwagon, bandwagon Parties and Party Systems in the Philippines. And she explained that in the, old, in the olden days, we had essentially a two-majority party, liberal and uh, nationalista and liberal. So, that happened because the president was able to run for um was able to run for re-election and because of that there was greater continuity there was also fear of incumbency advantage from the part of the challengers so the challengers did not um hindi sila nagfragment nagcoalesce na lang sila parang imbis na country natin siya hindi din magsama tayo join forces tayo so isa lang ang main com uh, competitor nung incumbent but after the 1987 constitution because of the sexenio that the one single six year term for president. Nangyari dyan, naging karam karambola na siya after the, the term of one person ends, of, of the president ends, ang daming challengers. So, ang daming partido. Unlike before, na may two main parties lang tayo. Ngayon, nagkaroon ng sobra-sobrang dami. And that is the research of Dr. Yuko Kasuya. And there are so many other, there's so much other research in the US, for example, because in the US, doon sa kanilang state legislatures, some states have term limits for their, uh, for their state assemblymen. No? whereas others don't. There was a comparison made whereby ang lumalabas doon sa mga state na merong mga term limits, lower ang uh, professionalism ng kanilang legislators compared to those that have, um, that have continuity. Essentially, this is, this is the problem of misinformation being done by a lot of the opponents of constitutional reform. When you say, oh, constitutional reform, charter change, cha-cha, ginagawa pang cha-cha, eh, pangalan ng, ng dance yan, di naman yung pangalan ng tunay. Bro, 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 you never hear cha-cha as a word for uh, misinformation. Uh, Mr. Chair, nasagot na po yung aking uh, tanong, so I'd like to uh, thank you for seeing my point. Mr. Chair, ang uh, natuwa ko doon sa ating resource person ay uh, nice nating uh, baguhin yung mga uh, term limits. Sorry, so, so just make an answer to that. Okay, so 
actually there is a lot of proof that using a parliamentary system will end up actually making um, leadership better and um, end up having better economic uh, standing. No? If we do, we don't even need to do complex statistical regression analysis for this. Simply go to the internet and look at the full ranking of countries according to GDP per capita. Look at the top 30 countries versus the bottom 30 countries. Majority of the top 30 countries use parliamentary systems. Majority of the bottom countries use presidential or semi-presidential systems with strong presidents. What does that show? And then now if we look at a lot of research, such as the research from, uh, from Dr. Norman Luisa, Dr. Rodrigo Suarez, and Dr. Um, uh, Daniel Lederman, they showed that based on their statistical regression analysis to really prove it with beyond reasonable doubt, it turns out that parliamentary systems have lower Generally, lower, they're lower, they're less prone to corruption than countries that use presidential systems. Look at, look at Latin America. All of them use presidential systems. Are those countries the kind that we want to, to emulate? Or the ones in Africa that are all using presidential systems? Are those the ones we want to emulate? How about emulating the good countries like Singapore and Malaysia? I mean, Malaysia, with all its warts and all, is still doing better than us, generally speaking. There's, there's so much proof, actually, if I, had, if I had the chance to show them, it would be very, like, beyond reasonable doubt, makikita natin. Hindi lang GDP per capita, human development index, gawin natin yung top 30 versus bottom 30. Gawin natin, ease of doing business, ganun din. Same story. Human development index, tapos ano pa, ease of doing business, democracy ranking from the EIU, you do the same thing, top 30 versus my, uh, bottom 30. Majority ng mga magagaling, parliamentary. Tapos majority ng mga walang kwenta. Yun yung mga nakaroon. So, don't pass it. Peace and peace. Yeah, that, that's it. That's basically it. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, ano ba yan? Uh, uh, this is Pans. This is uh, nabanggit. Merong study na rin yung uh, UP School of Economics at uh, ang nabanggit ko kanina yun yung kanila conclusion. Regarding uh, anti-dynasty laws, first of all, if you all go to Google and you type, say, the anti-dynasty, everything you see is Philippines. And there are no other countries that have anti-dynasty laws or anything like that in their constitution. Secondly, the other question about term limits. The only other country I know that has term limits for anything other than a president is Mexico. Somos como los mexicanos. Somos los mexicanos de Asia. Tenemos un sexenio. We have a sexenio, the, the one six-year term that can never be, can never be re-elected. That's, we have the system that Mexico has. Their, se their senators are also six years, only two terms. Their, their, their congressmen or their, the members of their, uh, National Assembly only have two terms also, three years. Different from us, tayo tatlo sa kanila, dalawa lang. We are actually using a Mexican system. Yung ba ang sistema na gusto ng Pilipinas gumaya sa puro droga? Yeah, but uh, to this thank, you, uh, thank you, Sir Dundon. Yeah. To add, uh, yeah. unless you have to Carlos. I think the real contest here would be data qua data. To what extent will term limits in fact produce the desired result? To what extent will preventing people who belong to one family or up to X number of uh, uh, relationship, will it produce the desired result? Because if we don't have those data, then I think the claim that political dynasties and term limits, in fact, are solutions to the things that we see are challenges in our political system will not work. It will not wash. So I think we will have to be governed here by the scientific procedure. Dapat meron po tayong numero and the numbers should tell you a story. Diba? Tamang sinabi ni Kong Richard eh, kung ikaw gusto kong electin si Richard, no? Kasi gusto ko siyang electin for as long, kasi nakita ko siya nagtatrabaho, pero kung, ano, nakita kong ang tamad-tamad niya, aba, siyempre sa susunod, hindi ikaw na siya i-elect. Are, are, are the elect electoral date stupid people? No, they're not. In fact, more and more, they're becoming more mature. Hindi nyo nakikita, nag-iiba yung ano, political landscape natin. So again, to repeat, term limits and political dynasties, let us not put that in the constitution anymore because we are following liberal democracy and it is so antithetical to our democracy. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Carlos. Uh, yeah, yes, uh, now we'll back. So, to confirm, about the, Mr. Chair, we'd like to request Dr. Navarro to submit the analysis of the relationship between the FDIs and the economic development of, of, of your uh, presentation a while ago. Uh, yes, uh, your honor. Um, so, I thank, thank you very much, Madam Chair. Uh, I would like to um, talk about several things that uh, Honor Honorable uh, Paul Daza has uh, mentioned earlier. So, regarding the FDI part, uh, there are these books that have actually mentioned that have shown that uh, the more open an economy, then the better the results will be. So the more inclusive, the less extractive, the less exclusivist, para sa ilan lang, para sa mga oligarchs lang, the better. So these two books, Why Nations Fail, Paul's Economy, and there's also this one from Adam Porter to, uh, from Adam Smith to uh, Michael Porter. These books talk all about that. Um, and of course, the empirical evidence of all the countries around us na nagbukas. And then regarding sa OECD uh, listing po, um, yung least restrictive ones, so we have Kosovo and uh, Luxembourg and um, uh, what was the other one? Um, 
Slovenia. Uh, Luxembourg is one of, has one of the highest GDPs in the world. Um, so if we do a GDP check, uh, GDP per capita check, they're, they're at the top. No? And, um, and then Slovenia and Kosovo are countries that recently decided that they wanted to catch up. So especially uh, uh, Kosovo being a new country, they, they, want, they wanted to catch up. So they decided, let's open the floodgates. Let's be as open as possible para dumami ang trabaho ng mga tao namin. Now, uh, um, now going to the other question, uh, sir, about the term limits and uh, first of all, the dynasties and then the term limits. There is actually a lot of research on that. There's, there's one particular paper, um, parliamentary pri privilege in, in, in Canada's court. So, um, kinship in Canada's Parliament by Dr. Matthew Godwin. So, the results of this study shows that because Canada improved their economy, so as, as they improved, naglesen na naglesen na naglesen yung kanilang mga political family. So, there started to be a much more diversity in the composition of their uh, of the lower house and the Senate. So. Basically, there is, there is a lot of evidence that as a country gets richer, no wala ang dynasties, or at least na lesson man lang. And the other thing um, regarding the term limits and its connection with dynasties, this, this is from Dr. Pablo Kerubin. The research paper is called Political Reform and Elite Persistence, Term Limits and Political Dynasties in the Philippines. This is the one that says that because of the term limits imposed by the 1987 constitution, immediately we ended up having a worse case of political dynasties. Um, the family, uh, was that when there were no political dynasties, they became thin dynasties, and when there were thin dynasties, they became fat dynasties. So, lumala ang problema. Um, and then, last but not least, I did want to mention that evidence shows that not all dynasties are bad. The problem is not dynasties. The, pro the problem is lousy, incompetent politicians. And where do we where do we screen them out? We don't screen them out at the family level. We screen them out at the individual level. And that is what can happen in a parliamentary system. Ang walang kwentang leader, pwede tanggalin agad kung talagang walang kwenta siya. And then the, because, you know, the mag, 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 mag develop lalo yung party system, yung walang kwenta na, na member of parliament, his own party will disown him and, and prevent him from being able to run under the party. So, if we go to, for a parliamentary system, I know a lot of people don't understand how a parliamentary system works yet, but actually it's very clear that the empirical evidence shows that parliamentary systems really are superior presidential systems. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I'd like to ask the chairman, Madam Chair, uh, as to the nitty-gritty, huwag natin lagyan ng detalye niyo because, you see, I think earlier, um, Antonio Abad was the one who said the world is moving so fast. No? AI, hindi natin na mahabol yun eh. Parang sentient na nga yung, yung AI. So, huwag natin uh, lagyan ng talikala ang ating kamay na sana, and I think uh, Kong Rufus agrees with this, broadly considered yung constitution, maigsi lang siya dahil bibigyan mo siya ng alago eh. No, Howard? Bigyan mo siya ng, ano, ng uh, wiga room. So, kanya siguro yung sinabi kanina ng ano, estudyante ko si Ms. Navarro na ano, na yung huwag natin agad bigyan ng masamang ibig sabihin yung to be provided by law. Because for all you know, yung mga legislators naman, syempre naman, they have many things between their ears. Hindi naman lahat yan ay magnanaka o ano. So, to be provided, the fact that they were elected in their districts is already a monument to that. Okay. Now, what we, we should really be addressing is not term limits and political dynasties per se, uh, Congressman Daza. Magkapinsan nga yan eh. Di rin sumer nagkakaroon ka political dynasty kasi sinabi mo, ikaw ha, nine, months, uh, nine years ka lang dyan ha, patas ng nine years, ay wala na ako. O kaya 12 years, ni pa sa, ano, sa senator. Therefore, ito lang, asawa ko na lang ang ano, tapos mamaya, after three years, ako uli ha. So, uh, this is a farce altogether, isn't it? How are we doing that? Ano ang pwede natin solusyonan? Kasi nakikita ko kung yung, yung dibuho ng political system eh. Ang dami niyang moving parts, di ba? Well, because, sorry sa commercial ha, because I have written Richard a book on electoral reform. No, bigyan kitang kopya. Si Richard kasi kapitbahay namin yan, no, sa dito, nung maliit pa kami. Uh, alitan natin ang alating electoral reform. Ang electoral reform, alam na alam ni Kong Rufus doon, nakadikit sa political party system. It will either bring about a multi-party system or a two-party system. That is how the electoral systems are configured. Instead of having a single-member district system, why don't you have a mixed single-member district and PR proportional representation? I know this is not the forum for that, pero siguro kung Rufus, you can call another, you know, and I will explain that. Basta may pisara ako dito, no? Masimple lang naman doon. And if we're going to have a CONCOM, why don't we move away from the single-member district? Why don't we have a multiple-member district? Ilan ba district to? 252. Okay. Para, para di pa natin may multiple member district. Imbis isa lang yun sa isang electoral district, dalawa, you know, pag-usapan ninyo kung ilan ang gusto nyo. Uh, kasi we're talking representation, ano, kong Rufus eh. Pero let's just open our minds to it. Buksan lang natin ang mind dance. Imbis sa single member district, multiple member district, where ano. So, um, 
Again, as a political scientist, I would like us to pay attention to critical variables because some variables are not critical. When they are not critical, they are not predict predictor. When you say predictor, if you have an array of variables there, which is the one that will lead to the desired effect? And when you have an array of variables there, I can, uh, the empirical evidence will support that the electoral system, in fact, has a very, very strong potency among all the other variables. By the way, horrid, nakita mo na rin yung empirical evidence na to. Among our colleagues, no? Talagang inano namin to, nagbangayan kami tungkol dito. Ang ginawa nila, nagawa sila ng uh, correlates, no? But you know, when you do correlates, you're not just following the numbers. Hindi po sinabi, this is significant, uh, uh, related significant to a five uh, confidence level. Kunyari mo ganun. So sabi ko, hindi mo pwedeng bakita yan kasi the numbers should tell a story. Di ba, Tom Rufus? Or kinakikita mo sa correlates mo, nakikita mo sa regression, na, na the numbers are telling you merong, merong correlates and they're significant. But I want to see the story on the ground because the numbers might tell you a correlation, but the situation on the ground will tell you a very absurd relationship. So yun eh. Kasi sabi nila, oh, pag may political dynasty, mataas ang poverty. Sabi ko, ba't mo nasabi yan? Bigay mo nga sa akin through process tracing. No? Huwag na natin sabihin kung sinong calling natin nagawa nun. Sinyo down ko siya. So sabi ko, ang poverty nang gagaling sa iba't ibang ano. Ah, uh, dimension sources ano? Hindi mo sasabihin galing yun sa political dynasty kasi papakita mo sa akin na ito, poverty nang galing dito, pangalan nito political dynasty, 'di ba? So, here again, I think with all due respect, I think please listen to the scientists kasi ito po yung ginagawa namin. We will say I don't know if the data is not there. Thank you. Anong masasabi niyo mga kababayan tungkol sa isyong ito? Mag-comment lang po kayo at huwag kalimutang mag-like at i-share na rin ang aking video.